Welcome to No Longer Conformed. I'm Eric Garthy, and we are studying a Christian walk, understanding doubt in a believer's life. In this session, we'll be looking at Lamentations chapter 3, verses 13 to 26. I'm hurting. Christians make the mistake of thinking we are safe in our own strength, but all it takes is one bad storm to show us how weak we really are. God allows storms to come our way so that we might recognize just how small and weak we are and how much we need to depend on him. Doubt is a storm. It comes in many ways, creating tension with faith. Last time we considered factual doubt, overthinking about circumstances. Emotional doubt comes when a believer's emotions, the ima imaginations, moods, feelings, reactions, when be a believer's emotional uh, emotions rise and overpower the understanding faith. A little bit of information goes a long way. My friend Pablo used to tell me, because I could figure out what was going on with very little information, he used to tell me, uh, Eric, you have the uncanny ability to find a hubcap and build a Volkswagen. How do you learn to master emotional doubt? First, you must recognize emotional doubt. Lamentations chapter 3. How is it recognized? Well, preoccupation with emotions. Verse 13. He has caused the arrows of his quiver to pierce my loins. Verse 19. Remember my affliction and roaming the wormwood and the gall. My soul still remembers and sinks within me. A preoccupation with emotions can destroy our precious faith in God. Isolation from others. Verse 14, I have become the ridicule of all my people. Their taunting song all the day. Isolation from others during times of doubt can cause us to bear heavy burdens all alone. And often cave in under the weight. Alienation from God. Um, verse 15, uh, 13, again, he has caused the arrows of his quiver to pierce my loins. And then look at verse 15. He has filled me with bitterness. He has made me drink wormwood. He has also broken my teeth with gravel and covered me with ashes. You have moved your soul far, my soul far from peace. I have forgotten prosperity. And I said, my strength and my hope have perished from the Lord. Broken fellowship with God due to sin. This is not about salvation. This is not, not about losing salvation. This is about breaking fellowship with God. Psalm 66, verse 18. David had a thriving relationship with the Lord, but he said this in Psalm 66, 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. So if we walk in some uh, sin and we haven't repented of it, God doesn't want a fellowship with us. But he's always ready to forgive us. Uh, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Mastering emotional doubt means first recognizing it. And then second, you must not only recognize it, but you need to resolve emotional doubt. Again, Lamentations chapter 3. How is it resolved? You must train the moods where to get off. 
Learn to train your doubts where to get off and train yourself in the habit of faith. Look at verse 20, 21, down to verse 26. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. Through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Yeah, I question, what is the difference between teach and train? Teaching is to provide information. Training is showing how to use it. You'll be distracted by emotional doubt, but recognize it and use it as a signal to trust God even more. This is walking by faith. Os Guinness wrote, Mastering emotions is not to deny them, but to make them teachable. You think about that and you have a great day.